Are we recording sound? Yes. And video? Wow, the battery's going to die. Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I have another sewing video for you all. This one might be a little bit shorter than the ones you're used to seeing here on my channel, just because we have already made most of this pattern before. So what I'm gonna be doing today is taking my princess seamed jacket pattern that I made here on the channel. I'll link a card up to that video so you can see it here if you want to see how I got from my basic block to that pattern. But today I'm going to be taking that princess seamed jacket pattern and making that into a princess seamed vest pattern. So I'm just going to be doing a little bit of an adjustment to that pattern to make it work to be a vest pattern instead. So no sleeves, of course, just a little cute little fitted vest inspired by these sort of 40s and 50s style vests you see here. Basically, I just wanted to add another vest to my wardrobe. I still haven't really perfected my favorite, like have I don't have a favorite vest pattern in my collection yet, so I'm hoping that this will now be that. And I just wanted to make a little red vest for an upcoming video I have, you know, no particular reason why I'm focusing on red uh, as a color, uh, but, but we'll see soon, you know, won't we? Um, but that's what I'm going to be doing today is just making a red twill vest using my jacket pattern and turning it into a vest pattern. So we'll go over to the blue pattern table of doom and get started on that vest pattern. So here is that pattern. It's a bit wrinkly, but here's that pattern that I used in that video to make a jacket looking like this. We're going to take this same pattern, take a tracing of it, and turn it into a little waistcoat pattern. Now, what's the difference between a jacket and a waistcoat? I mean, you kind of just, you take the sleeves off. It's not that different of a, of a thing. Um, so if you imagine this without the sleeves, it would pretty much be a waistcoat slash vest, wouldn't it? Um, so that's pretty much the same thing here. Um, the big difference is between this pattern and this little vest pattern are, although they look quite similar here in the sketch, um, I actually did take from, this is the waistline. I took, instead of doing like the five inches that the jacket has, I came up a little bit and it's only like a two and a half inch extension maybe. And then I did really quite big buttons on this twill jacket. And I was just gonna do smaller buttons on the vest. So I came in a little bit in the center front as well because I didn't need as much of a fold over or not fold over, but um, extension for the buttons and buttonholes because I was going to use smaller ones so instead of having that be like an inch of overlap here it's just like three quarters of an inch on the vest pattern and then also because this you can imagine this gets sewn to this so there is seam allowance already in this pattern here and there's already also seam allowance along this armhole for the sleeve to be set in it gets sewn to the back here and that's where our sleeve goes in on the jacket pattern. So I don't need, I still need seam allowance around the armhole for my vest, but I need a little bit less up here at the top because I don't need it to finish exactly at the shoulder point for a sleeve to be there. I can have it come in a little bit further. Um, instead of having it finish kind of out here, I do come in just a tiny bit on that edge so that um, like if my sleeve of this blouse that I wear underneath the vest has a puff that it can stick out from underneath the vest, etc., etc. So the biggest changes, again, are the length of the, like, peplum of the garment, the uh, armhole here, and then also I did come down at the bottom, or the under, underside, the underarm area of the armhole, I did come down a half of an inch as well here, so that I had a little bit more ease of mobility and movement in my arms with the vest as opposed to the jacket here because again, those are just the kind of modifications I'm making because there is no sleeve going into the vest version of this pattern. So this was the jacket pattern. I will go ahead and now show you the vest pattern that I made to make one with a little spidery collar like this. All right, so here is my vest pattern that I drafted using that princess bodice twill jacket pattern. Um, so basically I just traced that Again, lowered the armhole on the front and the back side pieces, that quarter of an inch down here. I just kind of marked a quarter of an inch, or I mean a half an inch down, and smoothed that into the rest of the curve. Same up here at the shoulder. I took off a half inch from the outside edge of this, and then again, smoothed that back into the curve, smoothed that back into the curve. Um, I'll show you what that looks like in a second, because I am actually going to take off a little bit more from this armhole just because it was still a little bit tight um, on my arms when I was moving around in the first vest I made out of this pattern. So I'm gonna take it down another quarter of an inch here on, and I, of course I do that in the front and the back. So I'll show you that in just a moment, but this is just the vest pattern as it is currently. I made a kind of spiderweb inspired Halloween-ish version of this vest. Um, so I did a collar here on the original jacket. 
I had this curved collar and for the first vest version I made I did this spider webby kind of lapel here so the fabric that I lined this vest front with and therefore that showed when this gets flipped over was a spider web print so I wanted to include a spider webby kind of detail on that guy so that's what that collar ended up looking like um, what's nice is I actually can kind of like wear it folded under and therefore you can't see that spider web collar it just looks like a regular black vest which gives me some more versatility with this one which is nice and of course I did maintain this sort of front point sort of thing on the vest as well um, so it still has this little point here in the front but that just does curve along the front here and then um, for the back this is the back of the vest here again it has a pretty high neck here um, I actually cut this on the fold I believe but it does have a funny little like again spider web inspired pointy swoop situation going on in the center back this is the center back here um, which I will be changing for this next version into something a little bit different um, if you imagine this is where the curve comes in the most is where the waist is so when this gets sewn together, because there is seam allowance inherent already in this pattern, when this gets sewn together, it creates a little bit of a flare from there down, because you see how it overlaps. So here, it creates a bit of space for the bum. But I'm going to actually exaggerate that and add a little bit more flare here, so that it creates almost a little fold in the back. And I will do something similar to that for the center back as well. So we'll be changing up this vest pattern that I made from the jacket one for my first round. I'm going to be doing a couple of changes to this today that I will show you, um, but really it's not that different taking this pattern and making it into a vest. The biggest changes again are just adjusting the length if you'd like um, and then doing those changes to the armhole and then changing the shape of the lapel if you'd like. Um, you can change the details, but the base pattern is the same. I did just want to show you uh, how different it looks when I lay one piece on top of another. So this top piece here is from is the side front from the vest version of this pattern. The one underneath is the side front from the jacket version. So again, I came in that half inch at the shoulder and that I came in on this side front and also on the side back because again, you want those to match up at the shoulder seam. So that half inch is taken off of both of those and then it's just eased into the curve and then here at the underarm, this, I did the same thing. I took a half inch off, came down, and then eased it into the curve of the armhole again. And the same at the side of the back. You can also see how much I came up on the like extension. This is where the waistline is. So the jacket was this long and I made the vest much shorter. Again, this is um, piece imagining that there is seam allowance here. So it really is only an inch and a half down from the waist or something, just a little bit so that it stays nice and fitted there. Something else I do want to change on the vest today and that really I should change on the jacket pattern as well and my master princess seam pattern that I drafted from my bodice uh, front block here is that though the apex and the darts and everything seem to work okay on my dress pattern, on my bodice pattern, in the princess seam version, the bust point just does seem a bit high for whatever reason. It's possible that it's a little bit high here, um, but it just fits better still and doesn't, you can't tell as much. Um, so that's also possible. But on the princess version, this like where the apex is, the midpoint of the bust is just a little bit high on my body. Like it kind of sits, let me see. So if we're looking at Donna's bust here, what I'm talking about here is like her bust, like midpoint is here, but on my jacket, it's like kind of hovering up here. So it just doesn't, the bust, the roundness, the fullness um, for accommodating the bust is too high on my pattern. It's higher than where my bust is so it does fit a little bit funny and that's something i want to fix on future princess seamed things so how do i fix that um well i could you know completely start from scratch again <laughs> which we're not going to do i looked it up i looked up a solution on the internet and apparently if you just take and you draw a box do you, or, wow thank you computer for interrupting if you draw a box here boop, and kind of take this bust section and then you just move it down and then fill in the space, that fixes your problems. So you have to do that on the side front and on the front front. Um, let me look at the vest pattern instead here. Mm -hmm. So you take, you can't see the notches here, but you take a square out of this, scooch it down, three quarters of an inch is what I'm gonna go with, and then you do the same on this side. You kind of square off a piece here and scooch it down three quarters of an inch, tape those back in place, and fill in the excess. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that modification and show you what that looks like. So on a princess seam, this actually 
is backwards for whatever freaking reason, which is really irritating. You have these marks and notches to line up. That's just to indicate that, so you know exactly how to gather the bust into the front piece, basically. You have these little marks that you create when you're drafting the princess pattern, princess seam pattern. And so I have these little marks on my pattern that I usually will transfer in chalk to my fabric as well. Um, but we're using those as an indicator to where to draw these little boxes choo -choo, around where the center of the bust fullness is on these, this pattern. Um, I'm, I'm following a tutorial that I found on a blog post. I will link in the description of this video. So I'm, I'm following someone else's little tutorial to do this. Um, so I'm just gonna see if it works. Uh, we will find out today, you know, hopefully it does. So I'm taking that little table is so squeaky. I'm taking that little square that I cut out of here I'm going to be moving it actually five eighths of an inch down. So I'm just gonna follow that parallel line, come down, go ahead and tape this back on, and then I will fill in this space here. So I have that square moved down, taped down, and then the little open spots that happen, this is the side front and center front, or front front, proper front. Um, and I've got that square moved down for both of them, and then the space that was opened up filled in for both of them. They were clear in the blog post that instead of you know, rounding this point in, which probably would keep the bust right where it was and negate having done this, you want to um, cut off that little extra bit that is created there. So I'm gonna smooth this out um, and disregard this little line here that's gonna get cut off. So we'll cut these off and trim them up and hopefully that will adjust the bust to where I need it to be. So there's those pieces just cut off here. Now the bust has been moved down on both the front and the side front. Of course, this gets sewn to here um, so these two points match up, and this gets sewn along this princess seam, of course. I noticed in that spiderweb, the first version I made of a vest from this pattern, which I made off camera, my apologies, but hopefully I'm making up for it by including a vest video now, um, that the bust point just was too high on me. Part of that was because I was wearing like a modern rounded foam cup bra with that, outfit and this is all drafted off my sloper which is supposed to fit over the Bali flower bra which is just a little bit more pointy and more mid-century shape so that the Bali flower bra positions you positions one in a higher uh, place so that is part of the reason it didn't fit so well so I didn't I probably would need a if I were looking at how it was fitting me the other day I would need a full like one inch lowering but I think that was just partially because I was wearing the wrong bra with that outfit so I'm hoping a five eighths lowering will work out just fine. Now for some other changes I want to make to this little vest pattern um, from last time. If you look at this, this is kind of the side representing what I did the first time. So I have this funny collar here. I am just gonna go ahead and fold along this line here so that this has no color. So it will look like this side here. Um, and I just won't have any fold over or collar on this guy. But the other change is the back of the current pattern here, I did like this, it's kind of Again, bat or spider web inspired for kind of a Halloween vest is what I was going for. I do want to kind of do this instead this time, inspired by 18th century swallowtail jackets, which I will put an image of one here. I'm gonna do something a little bit inspired by this with the back of this new version of this vest. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the back here. So this is the center back here. Um, I cut it on the fold last time, and this is the side back piece as well. So you see this kind of almost double-ended dart shaped piece that is missing. Of course, along the princess seam, we um, put the dart fullness, we take the dart fullness, we take the fullness that would be in a dart away when creating a princess seam. And that is why we have this double-ended dart shaped gap between them. So when this gets sewn together, it creates the same shape that having a dart there would. Ha, huh, I finally got there. <laughs> so if I were to sew these two together, See how this overlaps here? That's because this creates a certain amount of fullness. If I were to tape these two together, it creates a, you know, a mound of curve here to go over the bum and the hips here. Um, what I'm gonna do is exaggerate that. So instead of having it just fit nicely over that curve of my body, I want it to kind of gather up into a sort of a fold or almost like a pleat looking thing. You can put pleats in seams like this, by the way, but I just wanna kind of create a little bit of flare here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add an extension on to both of these back pieces. And then for the center back here, which is where this little peak is on this one, I'm gonna do actually the same thing. So I'm going to ha um, have a flare come out here and quite point quite far down and then come back up. And um, that means instead of being able to cut this on the fold, I will have to cut it into pieces, 
which means I will have to add seam allowance to this center back as well because right now it's made, see these arrows, to cut on a fold, so I don't need any seam allowance there, but if I'm going to cut two of these separately instead of in one on the fold, I will have to add seam allowance for a center back seam. But of course, doing that center back seam will allow me to add fullness into it to create, again, these little tails, basically. Okay, so for the side back here, um, where I'm talking about adding that bit of flare to create these little curvy bits of fullness in the back here, um, I'm just kind of deciding how long I want those points to be, how extra I want that width to be added. Um, I may want more or less. This is what I'm going to start with. It looks crazy right now. Um, I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to do like the same length of modification to the back, including adding a much longer tail to the center back here with that flare as well. Um, so I'm going to draw kind of the similar sort of dealio onto the back here, cut that out and tape it together so we can get a look at what it looks like and see if my idea is working. So if we thought the side back was looking a little silly now with this big point on it, um, welcome to the princess vest back where I have now added a point from the center back that looks kind of like that scoop back up and had another point to meet this one. So again, eventually this, imagine this is the waist, this is the waist, this will be sewn to that and then this will be sewn up here and this whole area will create a flare. Um, again, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this wildness out, add um, a half inch seam allowance all the way up this center back as well so that I can have that center back seam. And then I will tape these two together so we can see kind of the fullness we've created. Ignore the uh, wig stuff in a box here. So I've taken the pattern over onto Donna real fast just to show you the principle behind having these crazy points that I was putting on there. So if you imagine this is where the waist is, and of course this is in paper, so it's not laying ni nearly as nicely as fabric would, those little extensions that I was adding onto the back seam here create these little pointed flares, essentially, from the back and the back side seams. And I'm trying to decide if I want to keep this rather pointy, fanciful shape, or if I do just want to round off this curve. Uh, the temptation to keep like fanciful points is strong, but I think I'm going to go ahead and round off this extension here, this part of the skirt of the vest basically, and then I'll keep the points in the back. However, I added on, if you imagine the center back would come straight here, I added on here and I don't think I need to add on as much, so I'm going to fold a little bit of that fullness away. So I will show you those modifications over on the table. Here's what that looks like on the table, by the way, so you can see. We're creating flair when we do that. So um, it's just hard to imagine what it looks like on the body here on the table. Like what if I take a curve out of it? Let's cut that off and see what it looks like. I think we're gonna try this. I was gonna curve this, like just kind of smooth this whole area out. From those long points we had, but I, I've cut it again, kind of spider webby <laughs> or bat wing-ish. And I think I'm gonna keep it uh, for this particular project just to see how it looks. Um, maybe it's a bad idea but we will find out later. Um, so that's gonna be what my little flare here at the back side seam will be. I'm gonna go ahead and take untape these from each other. And then um, again, I did add that seam allowance up the center back. Don't forget that if you are gonna put a seam down the center back, you need seam allowance. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do before I cut this out, here's the front again, if we remember is I'm going to take the front side and the back side and again, come down another quarter of an inch on each of those and then ease that into the armhole just for a little bit more room underneath there. That's what these two, the back and then the side back look like separated by the way. So that's what those look like now and we'll see if that's enough flare. My worry here actually is funny enough that this is not tilted out enough, but we'll see. Um, I'll make sure to line this in something that's pretty enough that we can it can be seen. Um, because it may just be seen um, when, well, it will be seen when this is being worn. So um, again, here on the front, I'm going to lower those down now. Here I have the front and the back um, matched up with the side seams. I'm just going to take that quarter of an inch off and just ease that into the armhole on both sides and slice those that excess off. Final vest pattern for today. Um, again, all just little design tweaks, uh, very similar to that princess jacket pattern, just that arm lowering and the playing with the different fun things at the hem, hem, or the peplum of the vest basically. And then here I've just folded the collar. You can see the outline of the spider webby collar in underneath and taped it away for now so that I can cut it out with no lapel for this next version. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and go grab my fabric out of the dryer. I actually did wash and dry my fabric just for all pre-shrinkage out of the way I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna be using a cotton twill for this. So I'm gonna go grab my fabric, iron it <laughs> a little bit here, and then lay that out and start cutting out these pieces. All right, I have my dark red cotton twill here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my four pieces, two of each, of course, the left and the right. And I kind of, <laughs> I didn't remember to buy actual lining fabric for this, it turns out. I thought I had some burgundy, like dark red ran lining in my stash, but I do not. So instead I'm going to use this purple iridescent silk because why not really um, is the answer to that. I actually did bring the black first version of this vest downstairs as well. So you can see with that little spiderweb collar looks like made up here. Then it's just got buttons down the front. I did do top stitching along the seams here, along the side seams and the princess seams inside. It is lined in a purple rayon lining, this one. Um, so that's just what this first version of this waistcoat, as it were, looks like in the back. See as this is cut on the fold and it's got these little funny shaped hem going on. You can see the flare that's created by having that flare along the seam like I keep talking about. However, of course, this time we have more, so we'll see what what it does in the end there. Um, I'm really happy with the way this came out, act, came out, actually, even if the bust is a little high. Again, I'll just have to wear it with a perkier undergarment, let's say. Um, but when these are out, it's quite flashy. Um, the whole front panel is lined in this taffeta, Halloween taffeta from Joann's from a couple years ago. Um, but again, I wore it with those, these lapels tucked in and then just plain like so. Um, and no one was the wiser. And it's actually, you know, quite a, quite a gentleman Jack look as it were. Um, and that, that was fun to wear. So I wore this out thrifting, which you will see in a different video soon, actually, because I took you along on that thrifting trip, but that was the first version of this vest, and I'm now, of course, going to be doing it in red twill. This is actually the exact same organic cotton twill from Mood Fabrics, only in black, so hopefully the red will turn out just as nice in the finished garment. Okay, here I am laying out these pattern pieces on my fabric here. I am going to be just doing this whole uh, cutting and sewing portion in a voiceover, actually, because normally I do it with some text on screen, and I'm not sure I want to do it that way anymore in general. And also, it just takes more time and for me in editing because I second-guess myself on typos the whole time, and I have to go over it a ton of times, and I'm not dealing with it today. So today we're just going to do a voiceover. I hope you don't mind, or maybe you'll like it better. Who knows? Um, so here I am just cutting out the pieces in my fashion fabric here, the red twill. I am going to go ahead and start marking notches on this stuff too in a minute. But of course I need to take my pattern pieces off so that I can use them to cut them uh, the vest out of the lining as well. So just folding those up and out of the way for now. And then I will take my purple silk here and cut everything out of that as well. Of course I need two of each of everything, um, a left and a right. Um, this purple fabric, you notice I cut some of it on the straight grain and some of it on the cross grain. That's just because I only had pieces of this fabric left. It was like left over from another project. So because I was piecing this lining together in some ways, I didn't really care what grain it was on. Again, also because it was the lining, I didn't really care. So. Here I am cutting that out. Yes, I do use a lot of pins in every step of my sewing, by the way. Sometimes people remark on that. It's true. I also sew over pins because I like to live dangerously. All right, so here I am starting to pin some of the pieces together. These are the backs. I have those pinned together along the center back seam, and I am leaving a bit open at the bottom there. Here I'm going to be taking the side fronts and the front fronts and marking the notches on all of those. So here in the pattern piece, it has notches around the bust. So I'm just transferring those marks onto the lining here. Just using a pen pencil for this, mostly a colored pencil. There we go. And I'm going to do the same on the reds as well. Just transferring those notches or the princess seam onto the side front pieces here. And I will do the same with the notches or the markings on the front. Just go ahead and put those marks on the front pieces for the lining and on the red fabric as well. I don't transfer a lot of markings, but when it comes to princess seams, I do like having my marks where they're supposed to meet up. All right. 
And so I like to do everything in batches. So I'm going to go ahead and do the first batch of things I'll be doing at the sewing room here. So I'm going to be pinning the side front princess seams together. So here I have the side front and the front front, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and pin those together. I like to do this with the straight front, straight or front piece on top. So I'll just match my markings up and pin those together. And then I kind of just use my nails to kind of slide this piece where it's supposed to be. As you can see, it doesn't want to fit perfectly. That's because you're putting a curved edge next to a straight edge, but it will fit and you just kind of ease it together there. It's creating that fullness for the bust, of course. And then you just pin the rest of this seam together here, or I will. I'm going to right now. Make sure everything's nice. So just pinning the front princess seams in my red fabric here. And the other one as well. You can put some like slashes or clips into this straight piece to make it like fit even smoother here, but I wasn't having much trouble with this, so I didn't bother. Again, you will be clipping this curve eventually anyway. Um, you clip all curves eventually, so you can put little clips in there if you'd like to, but I'm just easing it in with a bunch of pins. I use a lot of pins in my sewing. All right, and now I'm going to do the same with the lining pieces. So I'm doing the side fronts and fronts, and this one I am clipping a little bit. You'll see me pick up the scissors, just because this fabric is a little bit tighter woven, I guess, and it wasn't playing as nicely. So you can see me clipping that to make it fit around the bust area. Now I have the pieces that we just pinned over here at the machine. Of course, I have to put red thread on the machine. Here I am sewing the center back seam shut. Again, I am leaving the bottom little like tails open from the waist down. So you'll see I stop here before the end. So there's that on the lining and then the center back seam for the red as well here. Again, just doing the same, finishing a little bit after the waist, not all the way down those tails in the back because I will leave those tails open. And then I'm just gonna start sewing these front seams that I pinned. So we're sewing over the bust just here, up to the shoulder area. So there's that first one. And I will do the second red one here. I think I'm talking on the phone for a second here. Ah, oh, hey, there we go. Now I'm sewing again. So I'm just sewing that. Half inch seam allowance on everything, of course. Just kind of easing that curve through the machine, making sure that nothing's puckering or anything. There we go. And then I will sew the side front seams of the lining as well. I like to do, again, these things in batches. So I will pin a couple of different things, bring them over to the machine, sew everything, take it all to the ironing board, press, pin the next set of things, bring it back to the machine. You will see that this is the pattern. You notice I take more pins out when I'm sewing this lining fabric because it was being a little bit annoying. All right, so here I am just removing any pins that I didn't remove over the machine, which for me is a lot. And of course, now we have this curved seam over the bust on these lining pieces and on the front pieces, of course, too. Here's my back, center back of my lining. I am gonna go ahead and clip the curved area of the waist here. I clip all curves in life. Um, and I'm just gonna press that seam open. You can see my tension was a little too tight for this fabric, but whatever, I don't. I don't really care, especially because it's a lining, you know, whatever. Put that aside for now, take the pins out of the side fronts of the red here. Again, I will go ahead and clip along all of these curves and you'll see that I clip notches out of the part where it curves outwards over the bust. Um, and that is because one side needs, requires it. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but just trust me, clip notches out of the bust area, um, but here I am ironing the center back of the red as well here. There we are. And I'm just gonna iron the seam allowance, quote unquote, area of this little tail here in the back down. I am going to just go ahead and slip stitch this to the lining later. Um, this area I leave open when I'm sewing everything together, but then I will just slip stitch this in the lining down. So I like to iron the seam allowances down so that it makes it even easier when I get to that part. But this is the back piece all done here. I am gonna add, however, top stitching onto here. So. I will set that next to the machine for that. But here I am again, like I said, clipping those side front princess seams, clipping the notches out along the bust here, just so that it lies as smooth as possible, especially with this thicker twill fabric. And then just clipping into other curves as well, grabbing all those little triangles that end up all over my sewing room. Then I'm gonna use this Taylor's ham, which is just a little ham shaped stuffed thing here used for pressing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and press that curve open, press that little seam allowance notchety marks open here. There we go. 
so it's curved on the outside, nice, no puckering, etc, etc. I can iron the rest of this, or press the rest of it flat, so I will do so here. Just making sure I press this nice and smooth because I will be doing top stitching to uh, kind of hold these seams open as well from the outside. So I like to do top stitching on twill projects. For me, it just gives a real finished look whenever I'm using cotton twill. So to me, cotton twill and top stitching go hand in hand. So here I am pressing the other side as well. And then I can go ahead and do the top stitching on the backs and these pieces all at once. I will not be top stitching the lining at all. So I am going to go ahead and start pinning the next step on here. So I'm pinning the side backs onto the center back piece here. Now that I have the backs sewn together at the center, I can put these side back pieces on to the back piece. And so I'm just pinning those on here. I will just pin both of them and do them both at once. Again, I like to minimize trips back and forth from the board to the sewing machine, even though there will be many of them, but I just try and batch process here. So there's that. All right. Here are my front lining pieces. So I will have to go ahead and clip those curves as well. I didn't bother to clip out the triangles over the bust on this one, just because it's the lining and this fabric is super thin. So I wasn't worried about it at all, really. Just gonna iron those open as well. along that curve. Yes, I am wearing a Valerian Steel Game of Thrones t-shirt um, because in this video, I'm wearing my pajamas, which is typical for me in the sewing room. I don't get dolled up to sit in the sewing room, let's be honest, or to stand and go back and forth from the ironing table to the machine. Just pressing all those seams open, so much pressing. A lot of sewing is pressing. All right, here I am. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch the center back of the red here. I just move my needle over a little bit and then put the presser foot along the side of the seam that I sewed. And then I just run a line of stitching along that seam a couple millimeters away, basically. And like an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more than that. And I just go all the way down those tails so that in the end it will look like the same all the way down the center back, I guess. <laughs> and top stitching the other side as well. Just having a row of stitching along each side of each seam when it comes to the red here. I do increase my stitch length for top stitching. Usually I stitch normal seams with like a two, um, whatever that means. And then I will increase to a size three stitch for my top stitching. You can buy special top stitching thread as well if you want to have a thicker thread, especially for projects like denim projects. But I just use the same thread here. No bother. So just gonna go ahead and top stitch the front princess seams that same way on each side. Going along, this does add time to a project, of course, but I think it's worth it. And then I will go ahead and sew it. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew the backside, backside pieces to the back of the lining here. Just trying to go in order to make this video easier to understand of what I pinned to what I sew, basically. This fabric didn't want to behave when trying to sew over pins, so I do take them out when I'm doing this lining fabric. All right, back here on the table, I am just going to go ahead and clip my curves. Shocking. And press my seams open. Again, such a surprise. Wild, I tell you. All right, looking a bit wrinkly here, kind of puckered, whatever. It's the lining, I don't care. <laughs> Just pressing those seam allowances down on that tail like I was talking about on the red one. So I can slip stitch those tails together much later in this process. And for the lining, again, since I'm not doing any top stitching, I can go ahead and pin my side seams together. So I will go ahead and do so. Pinning the fronts and the backs together at the side seam. And I will set that next to the machine So here I have the red again, and I will go ahead and pin my back side pieces to the back 
like I did for the lining, but this time in the red. And of course I will be pressing the seam and top stitching it again because all of the red gets top stitching. That's just how it works. Lots of pins. Some people don't use like pins at all in their sewing. I'm just not one of those people. For me, it's easier. And uh, a lot of people love the process of sewing and I actually love the process of clothes. So to me, sewing isn't the most fun part. I want to have clothes. So I do t cut corners and stuff like that. I'm not the most couture of seamstresses because I want finished things. I don't necessarily enjoy the process a ton. Um, I do enjoy it, but like, it's not the main goal of sewing for me. So I'm just sewing those seams that I just pinned over at the table here, the side seams and the lining and the side or the back princess seams for the backs. And then of course here I have cut the curves on that and then pressed them open. And now I'm going to do the top stitching on those back seams as well. I didn't show the ironing of those seams because like how many times you need me to clip a seam and iron it open? Like you get it, right? You get it. I think you get it. So I'm just top stitching on the red. So much top stitching. Okay, so now I can put the, well, that's what the flares look like. Now I can do the side seams of the red here. So I'm just gonna pin those. It's funny when I'm doing these sewing videos, you can really get a good look at my tattoos. I only have these two for those wondering. And that's only because uh, they're expensive. And I have social anxiety about calling tattoo shops as well and making appointments. So there's those side seams. All right, I sewed those. Now I'm gonna clip the waist and press those open and top stitch them. Amazing, so remarkable. Who would have thought? All right, top stitching. All right, we're back. So now I have all of the outside together and all of the lining together. So the way you sew these two things together is kind of unique. So I'm gonna draw you a diagram. Basically, I'm going to, like this is what our you know, vest looks like as of right now. I'm gonna put the two later layers right sides together and I'm gonna sew or pin and sew all along these red lines. So I'm leaving the shoulder seams open and like a little bit down from each shoulder seam open. And I'm leaving the center back tails open as a place to turn the whole thing right side out again. So I'm pinning all along the underarms, but not all the way to the shoulder along the neck, but not to the shoulder, along the fronts and along the bottom edge. I'm gonna finish all of that sewing the lining and the fashion fabric together. However, I am not going to sew, I'm gonna leave a bit of open in the back so I can get this right side out and I'm gonna leave the shoulder seams open because we're gonna do a different finish with those to make it all nice and smooth up there in the strap area. Many of you who have sewn like a strapped dress from a commercial pattern will may have um, done this kind of finish before. This is usually how they have you finish those, I think, when you have a sleeveless dress. And seeing as this vest is sleeveless, that's how we will be doing it for this too. So all of this red area, I'm gonna pin and then sew. And uh, I thought this might be the easiest way to show you because just pinning in this mess of purple and red isn't that you know informative really. But a drawing perhaps will help us all understand what I'm doing now. Just pin that neck edge and the underarm. Again, just leaving about an inch and a half, two inches, well, probably two, two and a half inches open on each of the shoulder seam areas. All right, now we're gonna sew all of that along each underarm, starting and stopping, you know, doing a couple back stitches, going along everywhere I just pinned, everywhere that was red on that illustration. And I needed to redo my bobbin. Something is wrong with the bobbin winder on this machine though. It like screams now when you try and wind a bobbin, which is such a lovely squeaking noise. All right all that sewn. Look at all those pins. Oh my god. Okay, so I take all those pins out and now I have all those areas that were marked in red sewn and I will go ahead and clip all curves and corners so that things will lie nicely. Also, please forgive me if my face gets into the screen here. I don't have any makeup on and some of you have commented before that I have nice skin and that is adorable and very kind of you because I do not. I have had acne prone skin since I was about 11 years old and now I'm 28 and it is still acne prone and not very nice. So um, that's very kind of you to say that my skin looks good ever. Um, you're wrong, but it's very nice of you. Just clipping my corners and all my curves so I can turn this all right side out. Because of course now we're looking at the very inside of the garment. I am having a real good time with this because my scissors are actually quite dull right now. I need to take them to be 
sharpened. You can do that with a nice pair of shears, by the way. You can take them, usually like specialty sewing stores or um, sewing machine places sometimes have scissor sharpening as a service. Cutting notches in the underarms here, because of course that is a curve, and in the neckline. And again. And having so much fun with those scissors. Oh my gosh, please take them to be sharpened, honestly. All right, so now I'm gonna stick my hand in that opening we left in the center back and pull the whole thing right side out. Now I did get in trouble last time on sewing <laughs> on this channel because I was using scissors to poke out corners, which is a dangerous game. So this time I will be using a knitting needle to poke my corners through. So thank you for, you know, making me change my bad habits. So here I have a knitting needle and I'm just gonna go ahead and poke the corners that I just trimmed so that they can be nice and pointy. There we go. Nice. And the other side, just poking all those areas so that my corners are nice and sharp. Now, of course, this is looking a little bit balloonish, balloonish. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go around all the edges that I just sewed and like finagle with them, fiddle with them so that the lining is curled like onto the inside a little, a little bit extra so that there's a little bit of the red shows along this seam. I want the lining to stay inside basically. So I'm gonna go ahead along and pin and steam and press this lining so that everything along each edge is smooth. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. You can uh, also facilitate this by cutting the lining a tiny bit smaller than the outside so that this just happens naturally, the edge kind of curls in. And then after that is cooling from the iron, I put the pins the other direction like this and leave them there for the rest of the sewing pretty much of this project. So I kind of leave the edge pinned, which you can get pin marks from doing that, but you just steam them away and it's fine. Um, so I'm just gonna go around everything that I just sewed and press the seams so that they're nice and smooth and flat and that the lining remains on the inside and doesn't show basically, even though this is a very fun lining, I think we can all agree. And yes, this is best done with glass headed pins as opposed to these plastic headed pins because you can melt these, and I have. I do sometimes get um, mean comments from people telling me that I have hairy arms here on YouTube on these sewing videos, um, which yes, I do. Thank you for noticing. Um, it's something I used to be quite self, self conscious about. Um, but it's just like, it's naturally how my body is and it costs a lot of money to get your arms waxed and it's painful. I just would rather spend that money on like hats or shoes or something. So I just don't bother with it. Sometimes I'll like wax them myself, but like whatever, you know, it's like, we don't need to be policing women's bodies this much, do we? In a sewing video, people have done it. You guys, people have done it. But uh, yeah, someone had left a comment saying like nice PCOS arms, which I don't have polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, and there's nothing wrong with people who do. And there's nothing wrong with people who have hairy arms. So that's just my comment on that one. Here I'm turning in the seam allowances where I had on those back tails, that's where I am right now, on the little back pointed tails. Um, I had pressed that seam allowance down and said I was going to slip stitch this area all shut. And that is what I will do. So I'm just finagling those areas shut with some pins here and then still going around the whole edge here. This does take a little while, but it's so worth it when everything's nice and smooth. All right. Now I have to sew my shoulder seams and we've left all this area open up there so that we can do this and have a really nice smooth finish in the end. So putting right sides together here of the red, I'm going to go ahead and sew my shoulder seams of the outside red fashion fabric. So I have right sides together up here. And you'll notice I even tuck the lining away so it's not in my way in a minute here. See, Ooh, just tuck that lining out of my way for now while I work on the red. All right, so I got my shoulder seams together. Just go ahead and pin those. I didn't take the nicest of care of making sure that I pinned these perfectly. So one side turned out great and the other side is a tiny bit off, but like, ah, whatever, you know, trying to do things quickly. All right, and I'm so those shoulder seams shut here, being good and removing my pins as I go. Look at that. All right. And then on the tailor's ham again, opening up that little seam, just gonna press that open. There we go. And now our shoulder seams of the red part are sewn. 
and then we can sew the lining, which requires a little bit, again, of finagling, <laughs> of fiddling with it. So I'll pull those linings out from where I took them in. The outside is all smooth like this now. Yay! This one, not the best, but whatever. <laughs> so I'm going to take the purple lining now and put the right sides together as well. Don't worry, I show you the next one slowed down a little bit, but really you're just, you know, putting the right sides together. It's a bit twisted, but in the end, it works out, I promise. It seems kind of whack here, because you're like well in the innards of this shoulder seam, but... Um, so you have these two open lining shoulder seams, right? And you kind of just like bend, turn them around like that so that you can get the right sides together, pin those together, and sew them shut. And then you will have your nice smooth shoulder seam on the red and on this purple. Hooray! I think I mentioned in the intro and outro of this video that it's shorter than my other sewing videos, but it's not that much shorter, is it? Um, we did less pattern drafting, but it's still a pretty long video. I guess because I show a couple of different techniques here in the sewing portion. Alrighty. Now I'm going to sew the purple right sides together that we had just pinned. You can see it's like a bit curved and like you have to be careful in here. But again, it's worth it. Believe me. All right. And the other one. Ooh, where'd it go? There it is. What's happening? Okay. I am filming this on the day I'm hoping to get this video up or filming this, uh, editing this video at least on the day I hope to get it up. I didn't, I filmed this earlier in the week, but um, I'm actually going to see Frozen 2 tonight. So I'm trying to get this done in time because I have to drive to a different part of town to go see Frozen with my brother and my friend. All right, so now we have the nice finished inside lining seam of the shoulder and the outside is finished as well. But the neck edge is still open as we can see, oh no. And the shoulder as well, still open. Well, we can still close another one of these with the machine. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll pull the neck edge through the shoulder opening, like so, and then pin that area closed, and I will sew that on the machine. Just pulling that out. Again, fiddly, yes, but worth it. Pinning that together. The lining and the fashion fabric, of course. You can see, again, I still have left the pins around the edge of the rest of this thing, just so that it can kind of like cool and set in place, I suppose. All right, back over to the machine one last time to sew this neck edge together. Hooray. All right. Now again, that seam is a little bit curved in there, so you will See me go in there and do a couple of clips in just a minute because I start trying to iron it. I'm like, oh no, that's too curved in there. Anytime your curved seams are coming out bunched and sad, it's because you didn't clip them properly or enough. Them's the facts. So as we can see, it's not perfect here. I'm like, ugh, I better go in here and clip that curve. Of course, that is the answer. All right, now I can iron it nice and smooth up here. Just like I have the rest of every edge of this darn thing. There we go. Pinning, pinning, pinning. Fiddling with it, fiddling with it. I'm just actually pressing pins into the tailor's hand to hold it where I want it. And then pressing, using a little bit of steam here to get it to do what I want. Again, putting the pins in lengthwise to hold that while it cools. Hooray! Now this outside shoulder seam area, it's quite smooth and flat here, so I can just go ahead and press those seam allowances in like they're already folding and wanting to do. And I'll put my pins in vertically here and then just slip stitch this area shut for a completely smooth shoulder arm area. Woohoo! All right, here I am over at my desk. I'm just gonna go ahead and slip stitch this little area shut, basically. Actually, um, in my camera dies here, but I also did slip stitch the back little center back tails closed as well. That area that I had left open in the center back. 
I stitched that up as well, but we didn't get it on camera. All right, so our vest is all finished, essentially. Um, if you didn't want a closure, you would be done. Here's what the little flares in the back look like. Those are what the points look like with that all slip stitched down the lining on the inside. I hope that's correct that it's called a slip stitch. Everyone, if you've been watching this channel long, you know that I don't really know the names of hand stitches because I just never bothered to learn them. Um, you know. So here's our vest. Now it's time to put buttonholes on one side here. And so I am going to be doing eight buttonholes down the front of this vest. I actually just go a half of an inch in from the edge because that's how I planned it in my pattern. And then I just put um, three quarter three quarters of an inch long buttonholes, and I put them every inch and a quarter along the front here for a total of eight buttons. And I'm just drawing those on with my colored pencil and my clear ruler here. Again, I don't mind marking my fabric, whatever. <laughs> people are, you know, precise about things, but I am not one of those people, again. All right, that's what that looks like, basically. And I will take it over to the machine where I have a buttonhole foot and I have buttonhole settings on my machine. So I'm just going to do machine sewn buttonholes along those marks I just put on there for all eight of my buttonholes here. This uh, always is nerve wracking to me because I feel like if the machine decides to eat my project at this point, I'll be real mad because I'm nearly done. It's nerve wracking. So just putting those in here. All right, and just opening up those buttonholes. I just kind of start it with a seam ripper and then I use a tiny pair of scissors to cut the rest of the buttonhole open just so things don't get carried away and can have more precise control here. So that's what you see me doing here. I kind of just get a little bit started and then I slice them with the scissor. And sometimes I will check and make sure that nothing has gone amiss and that a button does fit through the buttonhole I put in here. Oh, there we go. All right, here I am, just our final step here, sewing on the buttons. So I'm just using these kind of gold brass little buttons with stars on them. Just going to sew my buttons along the edge here, basically, where they need to go. I should have, uh, I'll note here, I should have interfaced the center fronts on the, uh, of the lining on the buttonhole side, and I did not. Um, I forgot but I decided I didn't care. But that silk, you know, it could tear around those buttonholes on the inside there because I didn't do any additional reinforcement and I probably should have. And even on this side, you can do additional reinforcement, do a little bit of interlining or interfacing on the inside of the areas, but I forgot. So here is the finished red version of this new vest pattern of mine. I really am happy with the modifications I made. The lower armhole sits much better, feels much better on. I like the little flares in the back and then the moved bust point really worked out well. I think it fits much better now, so I'm super happy with that. This does possibly mean that I need to lower my bust point on my actual darted block as well. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with my block recently because it's made to fit me of two years ago. And the bummer thing is you make a nice pattern. It fits perfectly that day, but the body changes, which is just so irritating. So um, hopefully, I, I mean, my block is a little bit too big now, and that could be part of the problem as well. So I clearly need to go and make some adjustments, but that is for another day. I did also want to show you the black twill version of this vest, the first one I made from my pattern, the one I made off camera as it were. So here is that. This black one does make me feel a little bit like Anne Lister or a witch, which both, or Anne Lister as a witch, which both are great style inspirations, so no trouble there. I'm glad I was able to document this little project this week. I wasn't originally planning, like it wasn't on my schedule to document this project for you all. I know this video is a little bit different than my usual patterning and sewing videos. This isn't an indication of that those are gonna change. This was just an extra project that I happened to be doing, so I figured I would try and film as much as possible for you all, um, especially because I'll be doing a couple of projects here off camera because I need to do them quickly. So I'm gonna be making a few things in the next like week, two weeks here that I won't be sharing with you. So I feel guilty. I wanted to include an extra little sewing project. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make this fun red vest. Um, I will be making a few things off camera though. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. But uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, thank you for tuning in today. And of course I'll be seeing you here on the channel again real soon. Bye.